Hi everybody, this is Michelle the Crazy Homemaker and I know you've been practicing your dowsing. I know you have all of the things that we've gone over earlier. They're perfect in your mind, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So right now it's kind of your graduation day. The fun stuff starts now. Um, today we're going to learn to make simple charts and I'm going to be putting you on pause so you can look over my shoulder while I teach you how to, to do this and to explain a few things. So you'll be probably looking at the table most of the time unless I can um, have to turn you around to explain something. So be patient with me on this video because there might be a lot of flipping and flopping of the view and I'm going to try to make sure that you can see it so it's not backwards okay so I'm gonna put you on pause and I'll be right back um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a chart okay and I'm going to be very high-tech about this something round something smaller smaller round straight edge okay here we go let's make a simple chart we're going to just take a piece of white paper, scrap paper, whatever kind of paper you want, and then get a marker or a pen. I'm hoping you can see this and draw like a pretty decent sized most of a circle. Okay? It doesn't have to be perfect, but if it is, then you can make copies of it. Now what I do is I connect these two dots with my straight edge, as you see, is very high tech. Alrighty, there's that. Now, this is gonna be your field where you're gonna write your stuff in, but now we're gonna divide it. We're going to have like a central spot where your pendulum will come to rest. So from this line here, go around your other round surface, to the other side of the line and there you go this is where your pendulum is going to rest um, that's where you're going to start and everything else out in here is going to be where your answers go so now all we do is just start making lines from this line out here I start one in the middle yeah, approximately a middle out to the other line and then I'll divide that in half and that in half as best as I can. So let's just eyeball it. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be decent. And you have to be able to read your own handwriting. The best part of this is it's going to be in your hand, which makes it really important because your energy will go into the words that you put on here. Um, any words have energy and you just keep dividing these into the small portions that you want. Your words have energy, like I said, you can divide that again. And divide that. Hi, Rubes. Hi, Rubes. That's my dog. She come to see me. It's it's somebody shooting guns outside and it's making her nervous a bit. So you do this back and forth on both sides as best as you can. Nothing fantastic. Yes, the more um, the more you think about a word and when you write it you make the word like a, a solid energy of whatever it is you're writing.
All right, so now you'll have something that looks like this. That's one way you can do it. Or you can just write words off to the side. I'm going to um, just, you know, just write words like, like a fan going this way. You don't have to make, you know, the chart, but I, I like the chart because I like to, um, you know, if I have enough room, I'll split this again and, and add some more stuff to it. So, um, I don't have to keep it on a computer if I don't want to. Of course, you could make them on a computer. If you are computer savvy, then by all means, make them, print them off. Um, if you want, you can go out and you can print this off um, a bunch of times. And then you'll, you'll have this style for you and you can adjust them as you need them. All right. And I'd like to say one thing about uh, pencils and pens. If you, if you want something to be, this is my opinion. Okay. Not too many people are going to probably agree with me on this. Um, if you want something to be permanent, like my charts, I want them to be permanent. I want the energy to be permanent here. I don't want them to fade. I use a pen. If I want the energy to be in something, but I don't want it to be a permanent energy, then I'll use a pencil. So it's up to you how you want to do it. If you want to be able to make a make one of these and write in it, then you can erase it because this won't be a permanent energy. That's my opinion. Um, but this will be a permanent energy. Um, when I ask questions for other people, I write it in my notebook in pencil. And um, I will keep it like this so it, it's a record for me, but it's something that can be changed for them if I need to in the future. All right. All righty. So now some of the fun things you can do with this is... Um, I was mentioning before about restaurants and going to the restaurant and seeing which one would make you the happiest. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to start writing in the names of some restaurants that I like to go to, um, albeit or not. We don't go to big fancy restaurants because I love to cook. And if there's fancy food that needs to be eaten, I'm going to make it. Okay. So... Um, I'm, I'm going to put like Burger King here. And then we have a thing called a Captain D's. And that's a fish and seafood place. And then we have McDonald's. And we have Wendy's. And I'll put... Um, Brex here, and I'll be Music Man here. Back to work here, Music Man. That's a barbecue place. I'll just put a barbecue, BBQ. And we have Olive Garden, an Italian restaurant. And Carrabba's, another Italian restaurant and that should be good enough for right now so you can see I have all my um, restaurants that I that I like to go to they're mid-priced cheap cheap on this side mid-priced on this side and um, you can just mix them up however you want you can always add to it later like i said if you want you could split this down here if you have just one more to add um same thing just split one of these and put two in there it doesn't have to be pretty it just has to be functional for you okay I'm going to use my fancy new um pendulum here and i'm going to say i'm going to ask my question my simple question which one of these restaurants makes coffee that I would appreciate. And just give it a little spin, let it spin and see where it takes you. 
Burger King. You see that's going towards Burger King. Alrighty. I haven't had a Burger King coffee for a while, so I forget what it tastes like. But the next time I go for a coffee out, I'll make sure I go to Burger King because that's what was suggested for me. And I will have a coffee from Burger King. If I do not follow through with what I douse, then I'll never know if it was the correct one for me. So it's very important that you follow through whenever you douse. If you're dowsing for something that is important to you, then you must follow through. Otherwise, your dowsing will be erratic and it won't believe that you really want the correct answer. You might, if you, if you don't follow through and um, with the answers that you, you have, then you might just have your swing going everywhere, all over the place, and it may not um, give you a, an answer, or it might just sit here and say, okay, you never followed through anyway, so why should I do the work for you? Um, but that's what the way I feel that it, that it works, and a lot of people will tell you that. You must follow through. If you don't follow through, your dowsing system won't be tuned in to what you really, really want, and you will not get a true answer. All right? So that's how I would do something for like, you know, a restaurant, a nice restaurant. You can also, another good one. Like I said before, um, you can write um, without making a chart. I'm gonna do a color chart. How's that sound? And what, why would I need a color chart? Well, let me see. I had played around with this a while ago and I found that was very, very helpful. I doused for a color that would make me happy for the day or that would make a calm work environment if I wore that color or whatever I asked for to, um, to get along with my coworkers better, um, to have a peaceful day at work, to have uh, people that I could help or to have people help me, which color would draw people towards me um, for my assistance, what, um, what color would give me more confidence to make a speech. So go into your closet and get write down the colors that you have. I have white, black, um, red, oops, my handwriting's bad, red, blue, pink, okay, oops, sorry, purple, um, orange, uh, yellow, gray, um, what other color, green, I have green in there, um, I have brown, um, what other color do I have? What's that red thing? I have like beige, which is a beige or tan color. Um, well, that's gotta be good enough for right now. Alrighty. So I will take um, pendulum, and my my question would be: When I go to work tomorrow. What color would keep me the most calm during my day? So just give it a little spin, let it go whatever way it wants to go, and mine comes on red, as you see. Red is a good color, I like red. So tomorrow I will wear red. I have to write that down, wear red on Friday. I'll put that in um, my dressing room and I'll make sure I wear something red on Friday. Um, you could also use the colors for maybe a car. Maybe you want to buy a new car. What color of new car would make me happiest in as long as I own it? What color of a car would make me happiest? Blue. 
I can say that would be true. I'm gonna write that down. If I buy a, buy a car, buy a blue car. Alrighty. So I have those two things written down there. We read on Friday, which is tomorrow, and well, for you guys, it'll be today, and buy a blue car. We were planning to buy a car, um, I had a bigger one to pull our recreational vehicle, and I think it would be really nice to have a blue car because our recreational vehicle is blue, has blue on it. That, that's really kind of cool. I didn't think about that. Alrighty. So you can do that with, you know, make a color chart or um, say like you have a book. I'm going to use this book, Supercharging Quantum Touch. Okay. And what I like to do is after I read it, I will go through the chapters and I will write down in no particular order, chapter one, and sleeping and breathing. I will do that. I will make all of my chapters. You know, go to chapter two, the 12 color meditation. That's actually one of my favorite things to do. Chapter two. 12 color meditation okay and so on throughout all of the chapters no matter how many chapters you have if you have to build a second or a third um, second or a third chart to encompass all of the chapters of a book say if you were going to do the books of the Bible Yes, by all means, um, make as many um, charts as you need. So what you would do is, I, I need guidance for whatever it is that you're going to um, look for or want the answer for, and which chapter of this book would um, sufficiently answer my question. And you could say your question out loud. Um, so I didn't even ask a question, but this is an example. So it says sleeping and breathing chapter one. So I would go to chapter one for sure. And I would reread the whole chapter. If you want to, you can ask which page it would be on. So we can do that too. I make chart and it's a minus 10 to plus 10 chart some people won't agree with that don't know where I put my pen now oh, there it is some people won't agree with that because they they say that um, you should have a, a 0 to 9 chart um, mine is different I will have my zero will be straight up. I, I never use the zero, okay? Um, my zero comes to me in a different way, but you can have it here if you want to have a zero. Um, you just put it, put it between the two lines and that will be your zero. Right, right there, okay. And what I do is I put minus 10, minus nine, minus Eight minus seven minus six minus five minus four minus three minus two minus one okay those are the negative numbers and I'll be building numbers off of that and then I'll have a plus one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus Six plus seven plus eight plus nine plus ten. If you want it fancy, you can spread it out. Um, 
in in between you know one of the the ones that we first made a, 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 like a regular chart put your numbers within there just make sure you have enough to encompass all of um, 20 21 numbers here 10 minus 10 plus and your zero okay if you want you can just draw you know a line back to your center point here doesn't have to be anything fancy just something functional for you you could do it on the fly if you don't have one handy, you can be rest assured that you can make one, okay? It doesn't matter that I touched anything, but here's gonna be my zero. But like I said, for me, my zero comes in a different way because that's the way I, I trained it, trained my thoughts to, to create my zero. You might like the way I do my zero. You might like to have it on a chart. See, you know, you just play with it. And this is no steadfast rules, okay? Um, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. Now, if you wanted to find the page of a book that you could find um, information on, you can have your book out, name your book, or write your book down. And when I write something down, um, super charging quantum touch. Okay, super charging quantum touch. I will take my pendulum and I'll let it get the information of super charging quantum touch. And when it's ready, to answer my question, I get a, a yes, but otherwise it'll go side to side until I until it um, it's ready to give me an answer. Okay. So, what page using from zero to plus ten would be the best? I don't like to use the word best. Would be the most accurate information that I need and then say whatever the issue is okay and then well here's your here's your center point it's a nice little lovely mess but that's okay um, and ask ask that using 0 to plus 10 um, what would be the page number now it's I'm going to it oops I'm going to a 2 plus 2 and is there another number, please? Plus five, so that's two, five. Is there another number, please? No, page 25 on supercharging quantum touch would be where I need to get information. And I'm gonna be curious, especially since I told you that I would follow through with whatever I received from my answer of my dowsing. So I will go to page 25, yep. And this is about chakras. It might not, I'm not looking for anything on chakras, but it might have a piece of information that I could use. So I would read page 25 and see what all is in here. It might, like I said, it might not relate to chakras. It might give me an idea of what I need to work on maybe I need to work on chakras, then I would ask a question. Do I need to work on my chakras at this time? Well, yes, I do now, don't I? So I would read this to see what's in there and use this information to help myself. All right, so following through, making a chart. Minus 10 to plus 10. Minus 10 to plus 10 is a nice way of, um, finding out how negative or positive something is. Say your pet bird is sick and he's not feeling very well. So you would ask your, your pen, you write your bird's name down, Tweety. Don't write it on your charts though, but I'm just doing this for an example. I'll write down Tweety, Tweety the bird, Tweety your bird. Please connect. Well, no, I don't have Tweety the bird, okay, but I'm 
connecting with a Tweety bird of some sort. Alrighty, now Tweety, what is Tweety's health with minus 10 being the worst amount of health and plus 10 being the most healthy he could be, he or she could be. So how healthy is Tweety at this time? Plus two. All right, is there uh, another, there shouldn't be another number. No, there is not another number. When you do levels like this, um, it, it, it is very important. I use this constantly because I wanna know if, um, if I give Tweety some kind of food or some medicine, um, how ill will the bird be after I do that? Usually, if it's medicine and you can tell that he's getting better, you can find the level of how healthy he's becoming. Or if it's not working for him very well, you'll see your numbers go down into the negative. You do not want it to go to the minuses real deep because my opinion, whenever it passes a minus five, these are like really bad. And this is not this is bad, but it's not so bad, up to five. Um, from one plus one to plus five, that's fairly good. It's a lot better than a minus 10, right? Um, so those are okay, but I want to see my numbers being better than a plus five to get to a plus 10 as close as possible. And then you just keep checking and keep checking. Um, probably going a little bit further with you on this chart because it is so useful um, than, than I would normally have tried to teach you. I just wanted to teach you guys how to make charts today and have fun with that. Um, another chart you can make is um, anything that interests you, anything um, you want to check on. Um, say you're not feeling well and you can make a chart that would this is one I like to use too. Um, find out what kind of a, why you're not feeling well. Do I have a fungus, a parasite, bacteria, or a virus? And ask which one of these is affecting my complete being right now. And when I say complete being, I mean you physically and energetically. And you physically, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. Okay? So I would just give this a whirl and say, what is affecting my body, my complete being at this time? Bacteria. And then you can go back to your chart and how is it affecting my body at this time? Oh, minus five. So then I, I, I am going to take this as this is for me. Um, I have a bacteria which is affecting my body at a minus five. Now I need to find what it is um, that would make it better. Like, do I need to take a vitamin? You can make a vitamin chart um, and or a homeopathic remedy chart. You know, make your chart and check on there to see what would improve my health to the plus side. And then just keep working from there until your health improves more and more and more. And you will feel it um, when you follow through. If you do not follow through, you won't know how it's going to affect you, if it's going to affect you negatively or positively. Hopefully, it'll affect you positively because you're looking for positive answers. And then you can um, adjust, um, maybe have one that's teas. Do I need spearmint tea, peppermint tea, rosehip tea, um, calendula, um, uh, chamomile, uh, ginger, whatever. 
um, kind of tea you like to use as a medicine or as something that would bring you enjoyment. Um, there we go. So that's kind of an ish, a way you can use these as well. Just combine them. Um, minus 10 and plus 10. Like I said, minus 10 is the worst it could be. Plus 10 is the most positive outcome it could be. Um, and anything in the middle is the scale as to how, how good or how bad it is. And I think that's going to be enough, I'll give you more than enough information on how to build your charts and how to make a chart uh, and a little bit of what to do with a chart and what you would need to go into a chart. And for me, I'm a chart crazy person and... You know, what, what do I do with my charts after I make them? Well, I, oops. I have a binder here that I put them in. It's a, a kid's um, over-the-shoulder carrying notebook. And I have this thing chock full of notes and charts and things that I've collected over the years, um, just everything, okay? Oh, but that's so big to carry with me. Yes, it is. It's very big. That's where one of your notebooks come in handy. Make your chart, cut it out, paste it in the front or the back or wherever you're going to need it. And, or this is what my favorite is. This is a photo album that I get my favorite charts and I shrink these large size charts down 65% and cut them out and fit them in here and they um, I have all kinds of stuff here they fit perfectly and you could take them out and, you know, take them out real easy, exchange them, move them around, whatever becomes more important for you um, during the, you know, the course of you doing stuff. Um, you can move them around so you have them in the order that you use the most in. Um, I have all my dead charts in the back. I don't use these anymore, but at least I have them. There's my chart for, for my clothes. I have one, see? Looks just kind of like this one. Pretty much drew it the same way and have my clothes chart days of the week. Um, I have a bovis thing. I, I, I just went chart crazy. Let's see, days of the week. Electrolyte imbalances. Nuts. Which nuts would be most healthy for me to eat today? Um, heart area affected by whatever, say that bacteria that I come across. I have one I made for dimensions, um, vitamins and supplements, fats that, that you eat, grains, um, things that could harm you. Um, and there's the supercharging quantum touch. Okay. Just to give you an idea of a couple of things you can use to store your charts. And I put this in my purse and when I need it, I take it, I have a big purse, um, take it out. And I'm going to be needing a new one. I have two, two more that I'll be using. But after this, is, this is going to have to really die because I love this one. It's going to have to really die before um, I get rid of it. Anyhow. This has turned into a really long um, video, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it makes sense to you, but we're going to just keep moving on with the same stuff. It, you're going to be going over it. You're going to be using it again and again and again. It might be boring. It might not be boring. Um, you just make a chart, combine it with another chart, and you can whittle your answers down that way, you know. Um, use your number chart that is going to be your minus 10 your plus 10 is going to be the, your best friend it really is um, I 
any number that I need, I use that minus 10 and plus 10. I don't use a percentage chart. You can make one if you want, but I'm not going to try to read with my old eyes here. I'm not going to try to read itty bitty lines from one to a hundred. And believe me, it's a little hard. I will ask that minus 10 to plus 10 chart. The plus 10 side will give me a percentage. Um, it'll also teach me, tell me um, decimals, and I'll teach you how to do that. That's, a, that's another fun one. Um, and I found that by accident. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, um, stop by again because the next one probably will be a little more interesting. Um, so you take care and live in peace. Have a great day.